This is Slay with Crash Test Hobby, showing you how to install the electronics and trim your Pelican airplane. So let's start again by installing the servos. They're going to be installed behind the rear dowel. I like to install mine side by side. You want to cut a hole that's small enough that the servos fit in tight so they won't move when they're being used. I'm using MG90 servos and I use a soldering iron or a box knife to cut the hole. As I press the servos into place I realize they need to go deeper so I'm making a secondary cut so that they can go farther down into the fuselage. You only want the servo arm to be above the surface of the foam so in order to get the servo to sit lower I trim out the ends where the servo attachment brackets are and you can see that the servo is now down below the surface of the foam. Now we need to run the wires into the servo box, into the radio box, excuse me, ahead of this. Cut with a knife and then take my soldering iron and run it through so there's some room for the wires. I'm now going to bind the radio and center my servos. On this particular radio, I hold the bind plug and turn it on, and you can see it flashing until the transmitter is bound. Now I'm checking the power. You can see the servos are moving, and that, in this case, the LED lights that will be installed in the wing are working and operational off of my switch on the upper left-hand side of my transmitter. Use a 1 16th inch bit and drill the servo arm. I ended up using the third hole from center on the MG90 servos to get the right amount of throw. Too much throw and the plane will be unstable. I like to bring the push rods up from underneath the servo arm so the wires are closer to the fuselage. And you can see how they work. Trim the base brackets off of the servos. Now we're going to install the servos. I like to install the elevator horn one inch from the rudder. You don't want the rudder to move and hit the horn. So I press it up through. Let's show you a little bit closer that process. I take an X-Acto knife, cut a slit for the horn. I melt a hole to allow glue to flow around the horn. Then press the horn up through from the bottom. The rudder horn is going to be an inch and a half above the elevator. Do the same thing. Punch a glue access hole and install the horn. Now you want to put glue in from both sides of the foam to secure the horns in place. And you also want the holes that are on the servo arm directly above the hinge line. And then we do the same on the elevator. We're now going to install the easy connectors. We start by drilling a 1 16th hole in the top of the control horns and sliding the easy connector shaft through the hole. Then I put the snap ring on and I actually put it on upside down because of the shape of the horns that are in the kit and snap it in place. And then the set screw is screwed in, and it'll be tightened later when we trim the plane in. Now we're going to glue the servos in place. I don't like to put glue under the servos in case one of the servos fails. I don't want to have to tear the plane apart to replace it. Now. I turn the radio on, put the trims to zero, and tighten the easy connectors with the rudder and the elevator straight behind the surfaces that they are attached to. Now we need to glue the dowels in place. You can see that the wires from the servos are going to cross over where the dowels go through the fuselage. Pull the wires out of place. Put some glue in and twist it so that the glue is exposed to the entire surface of the foam inside the fuselage. Let's do the same with the front. 
but also realize at this point you're applying glue where the pod is going to be. So as I turn that, I'm now going to pump a few pumps of glue down into the hole where the pod will be and slide the pod into place. Now make sure that the pod is at 90 degrees to the fuselage and that the pod is also aimed so the motor will point at the left front of the fuselage. Add a little glue here and there just to make sure the pod will stay in place in an accident. We're now putting the prop connector on the motor. And also I like to replace the set screws that are in the motor mount base with three millimeter uh, screws. And with the motor in place, I now measure it so and figure out where it needs to be on the pod to leave a half inch clearance between the prop and the fuselage and marking the holes. I soft the pod and drill the, the holes that are needed for the motor mount. On this particular motor mount I also had to drill out the motor mount so the six number six size screws would go through. And just for looks, no other reason, I took a permanent marker and colored the pod. We have found that applying two 3 16 inch washers under the bottom of the motor mount screw aims the motor up just enough that it makes the plane easier to launch. This wasn't necessary when we were using smaller motors and building the plane lighter, but where most people are using this configuration, we are recommending now that the motor be tipped up on the pod. This is also true on the front mount motor. So if you angle the motor up slightly, it is easier to launch. I had to make an extension wire in order to get my speed control wires to reach the motor. You can also change the way you run the wires to your battery in order to not have to make the extension. You will notice that I brought the speed control power wire out through the side of the fuselage so that it would reach the battery connection. And I'm tightening the base on the motor so that the pop props spins freely and I'm also going to secure the wires to the pod with some wire ties. Thank you for buying our kits. Pelican is a great plane and a fun flyer. This is Lee from Crash Test Hobby.